Today, a NASCAR superstar will make a decision that will change the trajectory of the sport. On the last episode of Racing Infinity, Dale Earnhardt changed tracks, but in today's episode, his younger rival does it instead as the sport marches into the 21st century. Today, we explore what would happen if another of NASCAR's legends left the car that made him an icon, Jeff Gordon. The crew chief who led him to three championships in the 90s, Ray Evernham, led Dodge back into the sport in 2001, leaving his crew chief days at Hendrick behind. Jeff Gordon made the number 24 iconic, but what if Jeff decided to be loyal to Evernham instead of Hendrick? In 2001, Gordon would join Evernham for their first full season, driving the number 19 Dodge. Pepsi would stick with Gordon and become his primary sponsor, with a paint scheme inspired by his previous Rainbow Warrior. Bill Elliott still pilots the number 9 Dodge as his teammate, so what does that mean for Casey Atwood? Dodge and Evernham were able to bring in Atwood to run the Bush Series for one more season with a few Winston Cup starts in a third car. After a fantastic Bush season, he'll go full-time in the number 91, the third Evernham car in 2002. Now what happened to Hendrick Motorsports in the 24? With limited options, Hendrick brings in Mike Skinner, who's had a solid run with Richard Childress Racing, but was still looking for his first points win in the Winston Cup Series. DuPont would stay with the team and debuted a brand new paint scheme with Red Flames. Skinner struggled early in 2001, but would get into a groove later in the season, finishing 10th in the standings and earning his first points win at Kansas Speedway in their inaugural race. With Skinner leaving RCR, Robbie Gordon would join the team a bit early, driving the 31 full-time in 2001, and Kevin LePage would drive the number 4 for Morgan McClure until the last few races of the season. Jeff Gordon would finish third in the standings in 2001, very impressive for a brand new program as he often outdrove his equipment. He earned three wins on the season, the first Michigan race, the Brickyard 400, and Watkins Glen. With the team needing a bit of time to become elite, the 2001 Winston Cup Championship would instead go to Tony Stewart. As for other changes going into 2002, the biggest story is NASCAR's deepest rookie class ever. As mentioned before, Casey Atwood has one more year of Busch Series experience and is a rookie in 2002, though he wasn't able to take the title away from Kevin Harvick. Dale Earnhardt is still alive, so Harvick stuck to his original plan to run a few races in the number 30 and go full-time in 2002. Ryan Newman still takes over the number 12 for Penske. And lastly, Jimmy Johnson joins Morgan McClure Motorsports to drive their number 4 car. He was brought in for the last few races of 2001, and the team believes they have a steal on their hands, despite Johnson only having one win in the Bush Series. A few more notes going into 2002, Jeremy Mayfield joins Ultra Motorsports in their number 7 Dodge, still in a relationship with Evernham. Jeff Green leaves RCR and joins Petty Enterprises to drive the number 44 Dodge. Finally, Hendrick Motorsports is still looking to get back into championship form, so the 48 car doesn't open. For now at least. Jeff Gordon joining Evernham Motorsports has changed the trajectory of several drivers' careers in just one year. And now we take a look at one of the most anticipated Daytona 500s in recent memory as Dodge looks to win their first race there in three decades, while rookies and veterans alike look to play spoiler. With that all being said, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the 2002 Daytona 500. Starting on the pole is Ricky Craven in that number 32 Ty Dodge, and the 2001 Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip will start in second. Row 3, you'll find Sterling Marlin, two-time winner of the Daytona 500, and Kurt Busch in his sophomore season, he'll start fourth. Robbie Gordon will roll off in fifth in the number 31, and Ricky Rudd will start in sixth. Jeff Burden will start in seventh, and rookie Jimmy Johnson will will start 8th. He's looked very fast during speed weeks. I think people should definitely have eyes on that number 4 here today. Back behind them, 
son and father. Starting ninth is Dale Earnhardt Jr. And starting in 10th, his father, Dale Earnhardt Sr. Could perhaps an Earnhardt win the 500 today? Matt Kenseth will start in 11th and Todd Bodine in 12th in one of the two Kmart Fords in this race. Mike Skinner with a solid starting position in that 24, he'll start 13th, and Kyle Petty will start 14th. Bill Davis Racing's Word Burton will start 15th, and John Andretti in the Petty 43 will start 16th. Brett Bodine in his own team will start in 17th, and Bobby Hamilton will start 18th. Another rookie, Casey Atwood, will roll off 19th, and Kenny Wallace, who will be starting the first few races of the season in the number one until Steve Park is ready to go, He'll start in 20th, and then starting 21st is the defending cup champion Tony Stewart. In 22nd, you'll find Jerry Nadeau. Bill Elliott will start in 23rd, and Elliott Sadler will start 24th for the Wood Brothers. Mark Martin chasing his first Daytona 500 win. He'll start 25th, and Jeff Gordon will start 26th. Jeff Green in the number 44 will start 27th, and Mike Wallace will roll off 28th. Rookie Ryan Newman will start in 29th, and Jeffrey Bodine will start in 30th. Dale Jarrett, who won this race a couple of years ago, he'll start 31st, and Terry Labonte will start 32nd. Rusty Wallace will start 33rd, and starting 34th is Ken Schrader. AJ Foyt Racing Stacy Compton will start in 35th, and starting 36th is Jeremy Mayfield. Joni Machek will start in 37th, rolling off 38th for BAM Racing is Shauna Robinson. Starting 39th is the 2000 Winston Cup champion Bobby Labonte, and Dave Blaney will roll off 40th. And finally, starting 41st, rookie Kevin Harvick in the number 30 for Richard Childress, and Johnny Benson rounds out your field of 42 for the 2002 Daytona 500. And here we go. Ricky Craven and Michael Waltrip on the front row as we are ready to go to kick off the 2002 Winston Cup Series season. Pace car goes down pit road as 42 drivers are looking to make their dreams come true. Green flag and the Daytona 500 is underway. And immediately, Ricky Craven has an incredible start and Sterling Marlin jumps to second. Waltrip did not get going at all. Going into turn three now is two-time Daytona 500 winner Sterling Marlin moves past Craven and he's looking to lock up five bonus points to start off the season. Marlin leads the first lap with Robbie Gordon second and Dale Jr. in third. Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes to the inside of Marlin, and now he takes the lead with Mike Skinner behind him as we're three laps in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had a great first couple of seasons in his Winston Cup career, and now he wants to add more to that with a Daytona 500 victory. But still, it's early and plenty of racing left to go here at Daytona.
Dale Jr. has a new challenger. Here comes Ward Burton as he has another Dodge driver in rookie Casey Atwood behind him. And Ward Burton takes the lead. Now here comes the rookie, Casey Atwood. He takes the lead early in the Daytona 500. There's been a lot of hype around this young man and I'm sure he wants to make a statement today. Meanwhile, Michael Waltrip must be having some kind of issue with his car. He has dropped all the way back to almost last place in just the first six laps. Issues early for the defending Daytona 500 winner. Dale Jarrett has some help with a fellow Ford driver, that being Rusty Wallace, as Jarrett moves past Atwood for the lead. Dale Jarrett looking for his fourth Daytona 500 win. Can he pull it off here today? Going into turn one, Sterling Marlin looks to have a strong car here early as he takes the lead back from Dale Jarrett. Marlin has had a fast car all throughout speed weeks and now today he's ready to put it through the test. Going into turn three and here comes Jeff Gordon in that beautiful Pepsi Dodge. He takes the Everham 19 to the front here at Daytona. The lead has been changing so many times as Todd Bodine leads in that Kmart Ford, one of two Kmart Fords in the field. Brett Bodine, his brother, is behind him, battling Bobby Hamilton and Kyle Petty. Car on the wall! Kurt Busch goes up into the wall after Terry Labonte began to slow up. Dale Jarrett tags the 97 2, and here comes others as, oh my god! Oh, Ricky Rudd drilled the 97, he's on his roof, and the big one has struck. Kenny Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield, Shauna Robinson, Jeff Bodine all involved as we see Dale Sr. and Jeff Gordon sneak past the carnage. Man, we have to take a look at that hard hit that Rudd and Kirk Bush took. That was brutal. Once again, as you see the on board with Jeff Gordon, and you thought at first he escaped it, and then suddenly here comes more cars just wrecking all over the place. Gordon's fine, though. He's going to keep going. And let's take a look here. Uh, some of the replays here. Again, it just looked like a couple cars are going to be involved. And then suddenly just, oh, gosh. Ricky Rudd just slams into Kurt Busch. I am hearing Kurt Busch is out of his car. Everybody's out of their cars. Everybody's okay. So, obviously, that is the best news to hear. Here's on board with Kurt Busch. As we get another look at that big hit and just, oh, Wow. I believe Ricky Rudd was also on his roof. Let's take a look at that. So on board with Rudd, he tried to slow up. He thought he was clear, and then just the 97 came down. Last second, as you, we lost camera footage there. Here's Kenny Wallace, who's behind Ricky Rudd. Huge hit on that one car. Of course, he's filling in for Steve Park to start the season off. So not the best to start that Kenny Wallace wanted, especially that he doesn't know what he's going to do once Steve Park is ready to go. Caution is out here at the Daytona 500. The big one has struck. Coming to the restart, Mike Wallace is leading as that 33 team has been looking for sponsorship this season, so a good run here could perhaps go a long way. You may recall Joe Nemechek being in that car last year with Oakwood Homes on the car, but unfortunately that team does not have sponsorship, so hopefully, like I said, a good run here could really, really go a long ways for Andy Petrie Racing. Todd Bodine is second, Bobby Hamilton is third, Tony Stewart and Bill Elliott round out the top five as they go back up through the gears and we're back underway.
Mike Wallace gets a good restart. In trouble with the 31 of Robbie Gordon. He just lost power on the restart. He's down on the apron, and that's not good news for that Richard Childress team. We'll have to see what's going on there. Todd Bodine gets hung out to dry as Bobby Hamilton moves to second with Bill Elliott behind him. A couple of guys who can get it done on tracks like this. Of course, I was just talking about Andy Petrie's team coming to the restart, and now both their cars running 1-2, but Bobby Hamilton looking to take the lead. Going into turns one and two, and here comes Bobby Hamilton to the lead. Hamilton making the move on his teammate. He's got some help from Bill Elliott. Hamilton now officially out in front here at Daytona. Hamilton leads as a pack of five cars have broken out to lead the field. Wait a second. Bobby Hamilton's going down pit road. Wow. I, I was not expecting that. Now, he didn't pit under caution as he's driving down pit road. We'll see what's going on here. He's coming to his stall, and it looks like he's doing a two-tire change. Hamilton has reported to have a flat and wanted to make a change. So they're going to make those quick changes and get that 55 car back out there. 23 laps are complete as Bill Elliott leads the way, but he's under fire from Tony Stewart. And here comes the defending Winston Cup Series champion to take the lead. Mike Wallace and Jeff Gordon are there in the mix as well. There have been a lot of IndyCar legends to have ran in the Daytona 500. Tony Stewart, however, would love to be one that could win the Great American Race. As Bobby Hamilton has been caught by the lead pack, Tony Stewart is going to get held up. Todd Bodine and Mike Wallace team up now as Bodine moves to the inside of Stewart to take the lead. Now Bobby Hamilton's car is running much better since going on the pit road, but now he's going to try and stay on the lead lap. He's already in some trouble. As you see Todd Bodine taking the lead, Mike Wallace couple of interesting names that we could see in victory lane be huge moments for one of these two drivers here. Elliott leads the way now, but the leaders catch on to more lapped cars as the field has really spread out since the restart. Earnhardt and Jeff Green are without hoods, and now we're seeing another pack of lead lap cars catching up to the leaders. Sterling Marlin now leads the way with Mike Skinner running in second. As Skinner has been looking to build off of a solid 2001 season, Skinner said during Speed Weeks that he wants to get in victory lane more this season. As they head into turn three, Skinner has room to move to the inside of Marlin and with the help of Dave Blaney, Mike Skinner will take the lead in the Daytona 500. Check this out. Here comes the rookie, Jimmy Johnson, to take the lead. Johnson gets past Skinner as he is looking to impress fans early on in the season. Past halfway, Stacy Compton now leads, but as I say that, Dave Blaney dives down to the inside, and he's going to take the lead away from Compton. And with that, he's going to bring another rookie with him, this one being Ryan Newman in the 12. Rookie Ryan Newman now leads with the 2000 Rookie of the Year, Matt Kenseth, behind him, as well as Mike Skinner. 
Skinner all over the back of that Mobile One Alltel Ford of Ryan Newman. Skinner has a strong car here. I think if he's there at the end, he's going to be a threat to win. Coming to lap 41 as they approach some lap cars, Newman moved to the outside, and now this allows Skinner to retake the lead. Here comes Ricky Craven now as the pole sitter takes the lead from Mike Skinner. Craven, however, is definitely not in the clear yet. Craven tries to clear Burton in the trioval, but he's not going to be able to, and Ward Burton takes the lead. Forty-eight laps in, Jeff Burton leads with Brett Bodine in second, and this race has become so unpredictable. The lead has been changing so often, and there are still quite a lot of drivers in contention to win the Great American Race. As I talked about the lead changing, here we go again. Brett Bodine now takes the lead from Burton. Lord Burden leads the 500 again as we are now seeing him and other leaders come down pit road for green flag pit stops that will take us to the finish. Lord Burden has been leading for a bit now but that is going to change as Ricky Craven goes to the inside and he takes the lead from Burton. Here comes the other Burden as Jeff Burden moves to the inside of Craven and takes the lead as we're nearing 10 laps to go. Business is picking up with 10 to go as Mike Skinner battles side by side with Jeff Burden with literally three lapped cars in their way. This could get interesting. Skinner has that inside line, and he's got some momentum as he pushes forward. Could this be the big day for Mike Skinner, the 1995 Truck Series champion? Not to mention how big this could be for Hendrick Motorsports since they lost Jeff Gordon to Ray Everham. Eight laps to go. Fast approaching a slow car in Stacy Compton, and that's going to be trouble for some. The ones who truly break away were Skinner, Jeff Burton, and rookie Jimmy Johnson. I'm not going to lie, those lap cars looked incredibly slow. I'm surprised a wreck did not occur there as now we have a three-car breakaway. Going into turn three, and Jimmy Johnson is going to take the lead. Can the rookie win on the biggest stage? Can Jimmy Johnson put Morgan McClure back on the map?
Six laps to go as the top three are catching a couple of lap cars. And we see Skinner now taking the lead from Johnson with Jeff Burton still in the picture. Mike Skinner has stressed about how important this coming season is going to be. And just imagine if he can kick this off with a Daytona 500 win, this would seriously put him in the right direction to perhaps even become a championship contender. Skinner is stuck on the outside and he is trapped behind two lap cars, one of them being his teammate. This is going to allow Jeff Burton to take the lead from Skinner. So many lap cars off the pace and this one isn't over yet. Here comes Jimmy Johnson back to the lead as they hit in a turn one. We just might see an upset today. Three laps remain and the rookie is going to have to deal with more lap cars coming up and that could be what decides the winner of this race. There may only be just a few laps to go but this is a 2.5 mile circuit and there is plenty of racing left to go and Jimmy Johnson like I said has to hang on. Coming to two laps to go and Johnson is trying to hang on. He's going to have to deal with Jeff Burton again and he'll need to make his car five lanes wide perhaps to win this race. Down the back stretch and Johnson is up high and I don't think that's a good spot to be in. This is going to cost him for sure. Here comes Jeff Burton to the inside of Johnson. And Jeff Burton takes the lead as we're coming to the white flag. Three car battle for the lead as they come to the white flag. The rest of the lead pack is also catching up. Jeff Burton still leads but Mike Skinner is there now. He has taken second away from Johnson, and the question is, can Skinner make the move? They move past the lap car of Michael Waltrip, but nothing from Skinner. Burton is hanging on as they're going through turns three and four for the final time and to the checkered flag. Skinner is there. He's going to try and make a move to the inside, but I think he's going to be too late. And Jeff Burton is going to win the 2002 Daytona 500. Arguably the biggest win of Jeff Burton's career so far. Winning the Great American Race could not only change your career, it could change your life. What a big moment that could have been for Mike Skinner or even Jimmy Johnson. But still, those two really impressed here today. And I think they're going to be drivers to watch as the 2002 season continues on. What an exciting race in a race that had 44 lead changes among 19 different drivers. Now let's take a look at your final results. Jeff Burton is your winner. Mike Skinner second. How about Brett Bodine finishing in third? Jerry Nadeau fourth. Jimmy Johnson fifth. Todd Bodine, Word Burton, Ricky Craven, Tony Stewart, and Sterling Marlin round out the top 10. Matt Kenseth finishes 11th. Kyle Petty 12th. Dave Blaney was 13th. Bobby Labonte 14th. Bill Elliott was 15th. Joe Nemechek was 16th. Ryan Newman finished in 17th. 18th was Mike Wallace. 19th in the last car in the lead lap was Dale Earnhardt Jr. And then 20th was Michael Waltrip. Taking a look at the rest of the final results. Rusty Wallace was 21st. Terry Labonte was 22nd. 23rd was Johnny Benson. Bobby Hamilton finished 24th. Jeff Gordon finished 25th. Shauna Robinson finished 26th. Mark Martin finished 27th. In 28th was Stacey Compton. 29th was Casey Atwood. And 30th was Elliot Sadler. Tough break for Dale Earnhardt. 
He finishes 31st. Jeff Green finishes 32nd. Robbie Gordon, 33rd. John Andretti, 34th. Ken Schrader was 35th. 36th was Jeff Bodine. Kenny Wallace was 37th. Ricky Rudd was 38th. Kurt Busch, 39th. Dale Jarrett, 40th. And Jeremy Mayfield was 41st. And Kevin Harvick finished 42nd. And that will do it once again for another edition of Racing Infinity. It's been fun experimenting with the last two videos and doing two similar what-ifs back-to-back. Perhaps down the road, we could do a Racing Infinity special looking at if both of them happened in one timeline. Let me know if you'd like to see that. That said, it will be a bit before the next Racing Infinity. Because I'm proud to announce that Sunday Night Lights 1996 is fully in production. Stay tuned for updates, because this is going to be our biggest video yet. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Grayspeed Productions, and I'll see you in the next video.